Ladies and gentlemen, today is December 29th, 2012, and this is the Can Kale Show, episode Nintendo 64. Hmm, very nice. And what a fine time for us to be hitting episode 64, because we all know how happy the child was to receive his Nintendo 64 on Christmas. I hope all of you had a great holiday. We are going to be jumping right into the tutorial after we take a stroll down lovely lane. So we see here we have Korra facing Sakura in two different dimensions. One a little bit more realistic. I like that. Animated, animated stuff? Wow, look at this. Pepe Jorgens creating awesome animated artwork. That is super cool. Be sure to check that one out. And we got realistic portraits. Katarina, nice paintings. Ah, the elf girl from the tutorial. Very well executed there. Bringing those local colors into the shadows. We have a beautiful self-portrait of Alicia, our favorite little girl ever. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move right into the tutorial. No Twitter today because I bug you about that all the time. Figure you guys can go without it. For one, one time, right? For one episode. So let's go ahead and jump right on into this. I'm going to go 8 by 11. And we did do 300 DPI, right? I hope. Oh, I didn't even say what today we're going to be doing. Hans! Hans, well, you'll know because of the title. But usually I'm like, today we're going to be doing a tutorial on Hans. But I have noticed that I'm a little bit rusty as of late because I decided to take, me and the internet connection, decided to take a break for a few days because of the holiday season, because of the holiday cheer, and all that good stuff. But... Like the Looney Tunes, we are back in action, and we are ready to go. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started on today's thing. And I have actually done a tutorial previously on hands, but today we're going to be going a little bit more in depth and doing what I like to call a joint study session. So, as I laid out before, the beginnings of the hand, like the basic anatomy of the hand, I like to draw it like this, right? In fact, let me move this over. I like to draw it like this. Kind of start with a sort of oval shape, but kind of keep the top open, right? And the way that the thumb comes off is like this, right? And then to start your fingers, you want to think about this shape that's happening within them, right? So your middle finger goes there. And your index finger is there, and then your ring finger there, and pinky there. Okay? And then what I do is I just throw in that, that simple shape there, right? It connects with your thumb, and this represents the padding. So you can see here, that's the same way. Uh, yes, it is. So that shape represents this happening right here, and then the other line represents that going that way, right? So go ahead and do that. So we're just kind of laying out the general shapes, and I'll show you how these are going to come into play in just a moment. Then you have the wrist simply connecting here, here, and the wrist goes down like that. Basically, I like to think of the wrist here as almost like very, very, it goes almost flush with this end of the wrist. You know, it just barely, you know, changes the direction. There's a little bump there, as you can see, but that's it. It's much more smooth. Whereas the hard angle happens here with the thumb, right? And you got joint one and joint two. Joint one, joint two, like that. But I'm going to show you, first I'm going to show you kind of a realistic way to draw the hand. And then I'm going to show you the way that I simplify it when I'm making things such as my Emma comic, which is going to be coming out, the part three is going to be coming out shortly after the new year. I'm hoping maybe around like January 2nd, 3rd. But unfortunately, I need a little bit more time because of all the holiday distractions to get that baby finished up. But fear not, because that will be showing its face rather soon. And it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to show you guys. Until then, you can continue to tune in Monday through Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the Kane Kale Emistry. But that is another conversation for another time. So let's go ahead and start throwing together some gestures. Now that we know the basic composition of the hand, 
let's go ahead and show each other how we draw our hands. <laughs> Try to say that one. Well, that's okay. All right. So the first thing that I like to think of when I'm drawing like dynamic hands is if you were to cut these fingers off, right? If you were to cut these fingers off and then look at the little, just the little stubs, you basically see something like this, right? You can see these four circles, right? And from here, each of the fingers would extend out, right? And a fun thing to do is think about this curve that's happening, right? Like these are your knuckles and then the hands are going back like this, right? And say the thumb is coming out like that. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in on the sucker. You can get a good in-depth look. Submerging. So go ahead and take a look at that thumb, and then I usually just throw in like a basic like shape here, right? Just to kind of start the fingers. And from that point, all you want to do is, I mean, when I'm drawing these, I think gesture of a hand, there's always like a flow that's happening. Like, look at here. You notice what's happening with the fingers. You see this line that's going up and connecting here. And even it goes back to the thumb. There's a, like a uniting line or a uniting flow that's always happening within good gestures on a hand. So basically the way that I throw this together is I'll throw in like a line there, a line there, and a line there. Good. That's the basic start of a hand, right? This is kind of like a, a simplification. I'll show you guys a more realistic hand in just a sec. I know I said we were going to do the realistic hand first, but I changed my mind because I run the show. I run the show around here. Okay, so you can basically see how this is a very, very simple reduction that way the hands follow that same shape. And the cool thing is, is that you can take these fingers like one by one and say, okay, for some reason I want this pinky to be kind of like bending like that, right? Actually, it'd be more like that. And remember, each of your fingers has two joints, right? So you got the knuckle and then you got, bam, one joint and then two joints. I guess three if you count the knuckle. But I say the finger has two. So it's one and two and then one and two and it kind of goes through the rest of the fingers here. And then I always think of this line like meeting the, the middle knuckle. Wherever the middle knuckle is, it usually sticks up the furthest, as you can see right there. And the blown out white light creates a nice shape. You can see how that goes up and that meets the, the middle knuckle. And then the index knuckle kind of falls down a little bit. And there you have a fairly nice gesture. And you can connect that down to the wrist. And that looks fairly good. Now let's go ahead and draw another hand. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more of a realistic one. And then I'll do like I said I was going to do and simplify it. So let's go ahead and let me take one of these hands over here from from the reference. Um, ooh, here we go. Here's a really good one. So this one's going to be coming toward us, right? It's going to be kind of doing one of these things, or rather, one of these, right? So let's examine how the fingers kind of correlate with one another. First thing I usually do is I throw in the shape here, and then I just put in the the thumb, and I pay attention to how the fingers are going to interact with it. Right? So like this, looks like the, the ring finger and the pinky finger coming down like that, and the middle finger kind of comes down like that, and look, watch this, this shape right here. See that flow right there? That is going to continue all the way down to the index finger. So you see what that does right there? That creates a very nice gesture and we love gesture. Okay, so let's go ahead put this here. Notice the cascading of these fingers, right? 
notice the cascading passion of these fingers. Very good. Now let's draw on the joints, just so we can very clearly see what's happening here. In fact, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And you will see this hand take shape before your very eyes. You'll see the magic take place. And I'd highly recommend, like, as you're starting to study hands, like, look at photos of real hands first. And then, once you understand how the real hand works, then you can simplify, right? But I kind of have a way of, of just kind of simplifying off the bat because of all the comics I've been doing. More dynamic hands. So the first joint we know is going to be here and here. And then this joint is here. So this is joint one. One and one. Right? And then you got joint two. Right? And this is going to be going back towards the knuckle, which is under the hand that we can't see. Right? So imagine an arrow. Let me draw a, uh, draw a red arrow showing you the how this is working. So you got an arrow coming down like this. And it's actually going to go back underneath here, right? Underneath the knuckle. Same here. It's going back underneath there. But we cannot see that with the naked eye because we do not have x-ray vision. Okay? So, let's go ahead and darken this down a little bit. Moving on. I always like to think where the the fingers enter the hand or where they start from the hand there is you know this thing here but then this is like a little bit of like a, a padding that happens you know if you like kind of close your hand you can see how the fingers create like those little folds across there so I like to imagine that happening and it really helps to kind of figure out where the fingers start and then you have this area right here this is kind of the little the meaty area gonna go back to this area right here, that's kind of like the meaty area that, that kind of cushions and, and folds as you bring your, your hands down, or your fingers down. And that connects with that connects with the rest of the hand ever so nicely. And gives us good looking hands. Cool. So let's go ahead and finish that up. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and throw in the thumb now. Let's throw in the thumb. Also remember you got joint one and joint two there. You usually won't draw those little wrinkles on your finger. I usually try to stay away from those. I usually like to accentuate them with like a little, just a change in the line, right? Like a tiny little change in the line will say a lot about what's happening with the finger. Not so much there, but like here. See that little change in the line? That will tell us that something is happening there. It communicates much information with subtlety. Really, I think that is the difference between a good artist and a great artist. Great artists know how to work with subtlety and reference. Good reference. All right, so let's go ahead and throw in the thumb here. So we know that because of what we drew back here, right, we're going to be following this, right? So it goes out, and that's joint one. Then it goes up, joint two. So we're going to come up. Joint one is going to be taking place right here, and joint two is going to be right there. Okay, and then this is coming forward. And keep in mind, like the the 3D properties, aka the ellipses of this thumb, right? Like, say we chopped the thumb off and we could see what was inside of it. That circle would be taking place inside of it, right? Like that. It's going back in space. So keep that in mind. And you can throw in like a little line there, if you so desire. So now all I'm going to do is just go back here and clean up the lines really quickly so you can see our finished hand, or a semi-finished hand. That actually represents the fingernail. Let's go ahead and draw on the fingernails too, because fingernails are another big thing that I like to kind of study. Now the way a fingernail works is it usually kind of looks like this. Like say this is the end of the finger here. This is the end of our finger. The fingernail actually comes out like this. And then there's like little skin folds here, right? That kind of go up around it. 
and then you got the little cuticle or whatever. But that shape, that little kind of trapezoidy shape, is what you want to go for, right? Don't don't do them like that or make them pointy. Sometimes like anime girls have those kinds of nails, and they look kind of I don't know. Unless you're Felicia from Dark Dark Stalkers, I don't think you should be uh, doing that. But again, that's all stylistic choices. So the cool thing about right here, what's happening with this thumb, is the nail is just barely visible off the edge of it, right? If you wanted to make this realistic. I'm trying my best to make this realistic. <laughs> Good. And there's all kinds of like little, little tiny folds of skin and stuff that's happening with the more realistic hand that you can choose to add right now because we are painting realistically if you wish and for the purposes of the exercise I will go ahead and just do that we will go ahead and just kind of throw in a little bit of shading here just to further execute and illustrate my points okay that's good Let's throw in these nails here, right? Because we got the little trapezoidy shape. Keep in mind how the nail will curve around the finger, right? The nail curves around the finger. And with that, I decided to go ahead and record another version of me basically commentating over top of what's happening here. Because, unfortunately, the audio decided to crap out. But that is okay. We take our problems and we solve them. And sometimes it even introduces some new things into it. So let's go ahead and pick up right where we left off. So right here, I'm basically illustrating that you can create the form of the hands by the shading, right? Like notice that these knuckles up top here are being affected by the light. And then down below, the form is communicated by the shadow. You don't always have to just draw a bunch of lines on your hand and muddy it up. Rot, rot. It's not just going in, cleaning up some lines here, cleaning up some lines, putting in like the little, the little uh, lines signifying just the the joints of the finger on the other side. You can choose to add those. If you're drawing a realistic hand, then I would, but as you'll see in a moment, we're going to do a comic booky looking hand, and you will not be drawing those. Just drawing in the wrist really quickly. And I, that line right there is just the ellipse. I do that a lot just to help reinforce the perspective of where that hand is coming from. Kind of looks like a little fisty cuff thing, you know? <laughs> But it helps show where it is taking place in time and space. And that is a good thing for all of us. So I think I'm going to go ahead and move into what have we learned. All right. Let's go back into this. Let's go back into what have we learned by drawing over top with our red lines. So first off. The light shapes, you want to keep in mind that the light is communicating your form as much as anything else. Um, two, also, don't worry so much about the lines telling the story. You know, um, the flow of the fingers. This was something I forgot to say in the other one, and I'm glad I'm going to point this out right now. Just pay attention to the, the line that's happening between all of those fingers, like the, the relationship between the pinky to the index finger. Look at the, the wave that's happening. And that always makes for some good gesture. And now we are going to draw a little gummy glowworm thing. And I'm talking about how the fingernails take place on the hand and how the edges of the fingernail will always follow the ellipse of the finger. And I finish it off with a little tail there. And that makes us happy and a little bit hungry because sour glowworms are one of my favorite candies. And I got. Plenty of candy for Christmas, though, and I, needless to say, I need to go on a bike ride this evening, or this afternoon. This is a beautiful day outside, a little overcast, kind of relaxing. Good day to stay inside and play some Black Ops 2. Can't complain. 
All right, so I think what we're going to be doing next up is moving into translating this realistic hand to a comic book hand. And basically taking the rules that we've learned there and then applying them to something we can use for our comics. And I'll basically just show you how I lay out hands in my comic. So here we go. First thing you want to remember is draw with a light, light color at the beginning and just sketch out the shapes that you want. I always start my hand with like kind of like an ovular looking shape. And then from there, I'll start to sketch in the, the flow and the fingers, I think. Hold on, hang on. Okay, here we go. So I decided to take a little break there. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Keenan of the past. Catch up. Catch up. I hope that was me taking a break for something or maybe uh, the video lagged. I don't know. But anyway, the biggest thing I'm going to be doing here is I'm taking those old fingers, right, that were like this, and I'm going to actually crunch them in even further, right, and then kind of push the thumb in like this, right, and then have it going like that, right? Not giving you the bird, <laughs> but more like this. Almost like a Spider-Man thing. Yeah, Right? Right. So we're drawing that finger coming way forward in perspective. Right? Increasing and exaggerating the ellipses coming towards you. That looks nice. Keeping in mind the curving of the knuckles, right? Because that goes from regular to dynamic. When you curve your knuckles, you can't really like do it super crazily in real life, but yeah, like that. <sighs> Drawing in the thumb, that little line there is representing the, the padding between the fingers and the palm area. And just finishing it up. And you'll notice what I did with the pinky and the ring finger is when fingers are together, it's kind of an anime thing to do, but I'll actually combine them into one shape and then kind of put a little, you know, line through them to signify that the fingers are in fact separated and uniquely operating entities. And that makes us very happy. I think I drew some fingernails on those fingers and realized that fingernails would actually not be existing there. That is joint two, as we have learned before. That is not joint one. Joint one is actually touching the palm now. Or joint one is actually getting very close to touching the palm. And the fingernails are actually digging into the palm at this point. So I'd almost like go as far as to say when you're drawing gestures of hands, it's almost more so about the shapes. It's the shape of the hand. It's not so much, oh, get the fingers perfectly you know, all the joints, like show all two joints, you know, and the knuckle. It's more about what is what is the shape that each gesture is making. Like if I do this, look at like it's almost like a just trace the outline of it. You know, you see that there? And I'm like like this, see it's like there's a flow happening there. And I think the overexposure of the light is actually helping to show that shape there. Right? So you can almost divide it into two shapes, what's below and then this light shape up here. And I think that's the biggest thing that I always look out for when I'm doing comic book hands is what's the silhouette read? Like what is the outer shape and are the fingers and the, all the appendages flowing properly and pleasing to the eye? And then after all that's in place, I just exaggerate things and add like some angles. You'll see I'll actually go through and just highlight where I've made some changes and highlighted some bones uh, to accentuate in joints. And that helps to add some more style because if you compare the two, if you compare the two hands, you look at the comic book one versus the realistic one. The realistic one is very, very soft and there's a lot of lines in it that don't necessarily need to be there. 
Whereas the comic book one is much more exaggerated in points. It's pointy and it has like big swooping lines going through it. And a lot of the lines, a lot of just like the detail lines, like the little crevices and the wrinkles here on your finger, those are omitted and instead replaced with just one clean shape. So I personally like to do that. I even start my realistic hands in like a comic booky style and then I make them look more realistic as you saw just before. And then when I'm drawing comic book, I just basically focus on the shapes. Focus in on the shapes. And then pound them through their proper hole. Get it? It's like those old toys you used to play with. No, no. That is another story for another life. So now I'm just highlighting those angles, right? The knuckles, the finger, the thumb joint here. All those things get exaggerated within the comic book style. And I drew a fingernail on that finger, but I usually wouldn't draw it there. And then when I'm making like a guy's hand, I'll make sure that there's lots of really boxy, like the ends of the fingers will be really boxy, not like my hands. My hands are very feminine, artsy hands. But comic book manly hands are thick and boxy, right? And then what I'm going to show you here is how I would take the same hand and just change the fingers, like change the width and kind of point the ends of the fingers very slightly to make a more feminine hand if you're drawing Emma's hand. And it's actually not that big of a difference. You can see the palm stays the same. The wrist basically stays the same. Unless you got like giant forearms. But uh, yeah, Emma doesn't really work out that much. So if you have little skinny forearms like that. And then notice what I'm doing with the fingers. This is also kind of another anime inspired thing to do. Where the fingers kind of go to points. And usually I don't. I think I go back and I kind of change it a little bit because I don't like bring them to exact points. They're almost like just very rounded points. Still gives them like a soft but feminine feel to them. And I really like that a lot. Like that a lot. That makes us oh so happy. Oh so happy. So I think what we do here before we finish off is we're going to do one final review. And final review about everything that we've learned today. And then we will call episode 64 success. And we will go about our daily lives. But it is a good Saturday. It is a good Saturday to be alive. I'm excited to go for my bike ride. Get some good lunch after this. I am hungry. Like my stomach was like growling earlier during this. I was like, man, I wonder if the camera's picking that up. It's going to be pretty funny if you can actually hear my stomach growling during the show. Wouldn't that be awesome and professional? Yes. Yes, I starve myself so I can do the show. All right, so here what I'm talking about is the principle of the knuckle, the middle knuckle. And I'm actually happy that I actually went back and had to re-record this because now I can explain this properly. So notice with the, notice because of the shape that's happening here, look at how the knuckles line up. Like if you were to draw this hand, notice how far up, that is my middle knuckle, right? That sticks up, and that sort of creates a silhouette, right? And most of the time, no matter how you have your hand placed, your middle knuckle will always pop up and go down like that and sort of create the silhouette, right? So always keep that in mind. Unless you have, like, your, you know, your index finger up like this, you know? But even then, look at how the middle knuckle still even overlaps this. Unless you tilt your hand almost towards the camera, it doesn't really, nothing starts overtaking the middle, the power, and the reign of the middle knuckle. Now I draw like some little squid looking hand and just kind of further explaining what I just told you. And uh, don't copy that hand because those fingers are really out of whack. And, but that's just like quickly how I sketch in hands. I kind of just do little, quick little tentacle looking things. It's like a little squid. <laughs> Yes, yes. It's like a little cuttlefish. I love cuttlefish. They're my favorite sea-bound animal. And look at that hand up at the top. Like, it's amazing how just those those shapes represent the knuckles, you know? And it looks like the finger's kind of up like that. You know? Or maybe that's the thumb. That would probably be more passable as a thumb. 
and three fingers, like a good old uh, Simpsons hand there. Yeah, but uh, I want you guys to pay attention that when you're drawing hands, don't focus so much on getting all the anatomy right and like all the tendons and showing the bones and all that stuff. That that can come later, right? You can worry about all that stuff later. But for now, I think the biggest thing to help you start getting the idea of the gesture and the like telling the story and the feeling with a hand, because I've said this before, the two biggest things on a character for me are the face and the hands, right? Because the face and the hands tell the most about how, what emotion that character is feeling. So if you can nail both of those down, that's really good. But I would highly suggest starting with a simplified style, right? So you can focus on the shapes mostly and the silhouette and the reads. So with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and end episode 64. Woo! Thank you guys once again for tuning in. I will see you guys on Monday for the Emma Can Kale show, or the Can Kale Emma stream. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good Saturday. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I'm Keenan Lafferty, and I'll see you then.